you want to become good at refuting bad arguments, there's one thing you should know absolutely. It is what facts you should pick. There are lost causes, arguments that you cannot beat for one simple reason. They do not leave much space for debate, because they are immune to any kind of evidence that you may provide to falsify the claim. In order to get a better understanding of what are the fights that you should avoid, it is good to become familiar with the concept of falsifiability that was introduced by the great philosopher Karl Popper. This concept is one of the cornerstones of modern experimental sciences, by the way, like biology. And beyond the issue of argumentation, it is imp pretty important to know if you want to grasp the nature of science. To better understand how it was born, let's go back to one of Popper's sources of inspiration, psychoanalysis. You must have heard of Freud, uh, one of the founders of this discipline and of what is called the Oedipus complex. I suppose you also have heard of this, especially if you are familiar with Greek mythology. Not knowing who were his real parents, Oedipus killed his father and married his own mother. Hence, Oedipus complex, which states that you have a form of sexual attraction towards the parent of the opposite gender, your mother if you are a boy, if you are a boy, or your father if you are a girl. And philosophers like Popper tended to get annoyed by this because they could not find a way to counter such a claim. If you actually felt and talk about your sexual um, attraction towards your mother and you admitted it, then the claim was right. And if you didn't admit such a claim, or if you didn't feel it, it was because you hid it deeply into your unconscious mind. And that why, that's why you couldn't actually be aware of that, but it still existed. And the very attraction that you felt prevented you from becoming conscious of it. So as you can see, there's no way around it. Whatever your answer is for such psychoanalysts, you will always end up feeling sexual uh, attraction towards your mother and you as a boy, and you, you are, there's no way to destroy the argument. No, no, no kind of data can destroy the argument. So such arguments belong to the category of what is referred sometimes as self-sealers or self-sealing arguments. Hence the concept of falsifiability. Uh, a claim is falsifiable if and only if you can falsify it with some sort of evidence, if it is vulnerable to data. And if it's not falsifiable, then it's, it doesn't really belong to the scientific realm. Let's take another couple of examples that you actually see in everyday life. So, what plants feel. This, uh, we can see many books these days about what actually plants, how plants communicate, how they feel and so on. But do we really know how they feel? Is there a way to collect data, to, to have an interview with a plant, to, to be able to tell how it feels? I really doubt that. So you will always have to rely on external measures, measures and not about subjective, uh, not have data on subjective variables such as how they feel. Intelligent design is also one of the theories that, that post, pose the most pressing issues when it comes to falsifiability. It is a new form of creationism. In, in this approach to creationism, Hearth was like how to say that? In the old approach uh, to creationism, sometimes called fixist approach, Earth was created a few thousand years ago and all living forms of life have stayed identical since the moment of their creation. One of the problems with that is fossils, you know? Fossils that are quite easy, easy to spot and they do not fit in very well into this old way of, old approach to creationism. So, you can always claim that God put them to test of faith, but this argument fails to convince these day most people. So there's a new form of creationism now, intelligent design. And that says that, okay, there's evolution of species over time, it's accepted, and it has been uh, going for millions and billions of years, so they agree on that, but uh, it's even actually central to, to theory. However, this evolution, is directed by an invisible hand, not necessarily God, just a superior being. But they don't really believe in just random selection. 
evolution has to be guided by an invisible hand. But how, in their arguments, like how could you expect such a complex living uh, being or like complex organs like eyes to appear uh, just randomly? They, they, they can't fathom it. So that's why they, uh, they rely on the intelligent design theory. And still, you can see, it's quite a self-sealing. There's no really, you can always say, oh, it was just a mutation. And you can always say, oh, but the invisible hand created this mutation. So there's no real way around it. In when, and when you face such self-sealing self arguments, just stop debating. It's, it's not worth your time. It's, we are not in the world of science anymore. So if you're able to spot this kind of situation, well, congratulations, because it's really quite, uh, you need quite some specialization in the field of argumentation.